Hello friends, this is Reflections, a religious affairs program sponsored by Paducah Cooperative Ministry where together we do God's work with human hands. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Karen Winkle, pastor at United Church of Paducah, one of your co-hosts. Your other co-host is Gregory Waldrop, who's the pastor at Fountain Avenue United Methodist. Good to see you, Gregory. Good to be with you as well. Glad you're here mm -hmm. and glad you all are here. We have another a spotlight on the pastor session. We're glad, very glad, especially glad to have the priest at uh, Rosary Chapel and uh, also works with uh, St. Francis. St. Mary's La Center. And St. Mary's La Center. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Father Julian Abamir. Welcome, Father Abamir. Thank you, sir. We're very glad you're here. Thank you. I'm very glad to be in your midst. Great. And uh, I think uh, your accent gives it away. You're from uh, originally from farther away than uh, McCracken County. Tell us about yourself and where you're from and okay. how you got here. Yeah, um, I'm Father Julian Ibemere from Catholic Diocese of Okigwe in Imo State of Nigeria. And Nigeria is in West Africa. The, um, I was born in the year 1968, precisely 2nd January 1968, in the Catholic family. I am glad and thank God for having a parent, uh, Christian parents, and who are still living. Oh, great. And um, I had my elementary school and uh, proceeded to the high school, and then I finished my high school in 1986, and then I went, to the, I went to seminary, where I studied my philosophy and my theology for 17 years. Mm. Then after that, I was ordained the priest of Holy Roman Catholic Church in the year 1998, 6th of August 1998, mm -hmm. and uh, after that, I was assigned to work in a parish as an associate pastor, and there I worked. And there another assignment was given to me to open a school, a secondary school, and I did that. This is in Nigeria? In Nigeria. Uh -huh. And the first place, Our Lady of Lourdes, Omudre Bagoro. And the second place, Our Lady of Perpetual Suka, where I opened a technical school mm -hmm. called uh, Dominus, Christus Dominus Secondary School. Then there I was, I worked for one year as the principal of the school. Mm -hmm. And then my bishop relocated me and made me a pastor at uh, Holy Family Parish, uh, Mbato Umololo. There I worked for six years as a pastor. And when the need came for mission work, my bishop called me that now I would like you to go on a mission in the United States. And to tell you the truth, I was excited because uh, in the first place, that avails me an avenue to acquire experience, international experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found myself really, though that the church is a uh, uh, missionary in character, but uh, by working in another land, I see myself a full missionary. Mm -hmm. And then I said, now I have joined the bandwagon of missionaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was excited for that. And every arrangement was made to work in the United States, precisely in the Catholic Diocese of Owensboro. Mm -hmm. And then they did everything possible to have me come over. And uh, on, the, on the 22nd of February, 2006, I found myself 
in the United States. Oh, wow. And uh, my being here is a blessing to me. And uh, I've been so happy, I thank God, that I am in the hand of Christians, yeah. in the hand of God-fearing people. My being here have changed my outlook towards United States, mm -hmm. because when you are outside the United States, what you will know is what appears in the television. Mm. They show you everything from the Hollywood. You just you think of United States that way. But when you come here, you see that here is a land where people are their brothers and sisters keepers, mm -hmm. where people know God and committed to spread that God God's word without discriminating. When we were home, I feel like I have to be frank with you, as the stories that uh, if you come here, if you see a white man and say hi, good morning, he will not respond because you are not white. Mm -hmm. But I have never experienced that since I came in here. Mm -hmm. uh, starting from the diocese where I, uh, where I belong, the Owens Diocese, if we come, if we meet together as a Presbyterian, priest gathering, mm -hmm. you will not know who belongs to, who is actually from the United States and who joined the, uh, the, the diocese. We are just treated as equals, as brothers, as workers in the, in, in the lost vineyard. Yeah. And that made most of us who came from outside to see here as our home. Mm -hmm. And dispose, it disposes us for, for our joy, our work. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're happy for that. Mm, beautiful. Uh, so there are there are other uh, international yeah. uh, priests. Yeah, we are up to. We have some from India, some Kenya, Uganda. Yeah, in the diocese of Owensboro. Wonderful. That that bl that blesses our area yeah. because you br you bring with you um, so much life experience that is uh, opens our world. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, is there a particular, is there a special relationship between the Owensboro Diocese and the Nigerian Diocese, or was it just random that you happened to be at? Uh, you know, uh, in the Catholic, uh, in the Catholic Church, uh, the Catholic by by Catholic, that the universal. Yes. And then the we preach that oneness of brotherhood. And uh, once a Catholic is always a Catholic everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a uh, when you are a seminarian, you are trained to go out to preach the gospel. Right. And that gospel does has no limitation. Just like uh, in the in the uh, in the scriptures, Acts uh, Acts of Apostles, um, chapter one, uh, from verses six to eight where Christ told the apostles to remain in Jerusalem mm -hmm. until you receive the Holy Spirit. By when you have received the Holy Spirit, then you will be my witness from Jerusalem to Samaria and Judea to the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. So I think with that command, the church is always training the candidates for priesthood towards that evangelization, that preaching the gospel from one end to another end. Mm. So when we are being in its, uh, uh, being under training or as a priest, you are disposed uh, because if you if you become a priest, you have submitted your will, your right to your bishop. Wherever he says go, you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Methodists are that way too, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, have you been in Paducah all these three years? No, I've been at Owensboro. When I came from Nigeria in 2006, I worked at uh, Blessed Mother Church Owensboro uh, for two and a half years. I came over here last year, June, <coughs> June the 15th, last mm -hmm. year. Yeah. Okay. Is, uh, is there anything startlingly uh, apparent about the church in the United States, you've mentioned some of the similarities to it, but what, what's the most startlingly different things you discover? Yeah, I, I think uh, in the church here, in the church more especially, I am in Kentucky and then uh, Western Kentucky. 
then I talk of, when I talk of United States, I'm with particular reference to Kentucky and yeah. Western. I think uh, what I'm seeing here is um, uh, what the Catholic Church preach that uh, uh, ecumenism, I think I see it at work here, where people, the people are not concerned about the church you belong. What they are concerned is the religion you profess mm. and the human person you are. There is a cordial relationship among the Christians here that you don't count, I come from uh, Catholic, you come from Methodist, mm. you come from Presbyterian, you come from uh, 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 Baptist. All, uh, everything here, I see that cordial relationship. People go into services where they feel yeah. and where they are invited. They are not restricted in their particular church. I think that uh, prophecy is a, is a, it has a good thing to tell about the Christianity here, mm -hmm. that uh, where there is that uh, the Christian living, identifying with one another, love being the guide and uh, uh, being the principle of, uh, of everything. I think that is uh, one thing so remarkable mm -hmm. uh, for the church and the people here. Mm -hmm. mm. That, that's one of the gifts that is given to a missionary, yeah. is to um, not just to, 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 to give the gift of, of ministry, but to be um, affected by yeah. that, right. that ministry. Because I think now that, that that's uh, kind of opened your eyes and gives you a vision of, of uh, Christian community that's different. And, and you'll, that'll be part of your message wherever yeah. your ministry takes you in, yes. in your long life, yeah. which is a beautiful I thing. Think, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, two unrelated questions, the, at least the theologically unrelated. First is, where is your favorite geographical place you've seen in the, your time in the United States? And secondly, when we all come visit Nigeria, where What's the, your favorite place there to go visit so that we need not miss when we go there? Now, uh, if you come to Nigeria, first I will take you to a village so that you see people in their natural habitats mm -hmm. and uh, see things, they dif you see a different world altogether. Like here, when you come over here, uh, there are things you cannot imagine in your life that is existing in the world. Maybe how people live their life, mm -hmm. where people live. Then when you go there, you see it, and that, that will help you to, I, to, I, to, to build more relationship with God and to be grateful to God for what he has endowed you with. Mm. Because when you are here, I tell some people that you who, you who are here, who are Americans, you don't know the, the, the blessings you have from God. When you go out of America, you will see another world. Mm. Like um, when I, I went on vacation by the end of December, mm -hmm. I was home when the storm, ice storm oh, yeah. struck. Then I came back home and people were saying, I just, from Nashville, I came up. Around here, <laughs> it seems uh, like war zone, oh, trees, right. everything. I said, right. what happened? They told me, and they told me that they were, there was a blackout for some time. Yes. I said, uh, okay. I said, it is good. Because a philosopher, Aristotle, says that he who considers light should also consider the darkness. Mm. So that when the darkness comes, you will not be in trouble. In the church, I asked... Uh, we had the reading, Gospel of St. John, that says, you are the light of the world. Mm. Then I used that as the theme of reflection. Then I called up one of the small kids in the church and, and asked him the question, have you seen darkness before? He said, yes. When? During the ice storm. I said, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to let. I want to. Yeah. I want to know from you. I want people to know that without the ice storm, you wouldn't have known what darkness looks like. Mm -hmm. 
But myself, uh, it's not a problem to me because I come from a place where darkness is part of life. Mm -hmm. You, you, unless you are you have you are you live in a city, or you have tried to walk yourself up to a level that you can get your generator to put her in your house, you don't air condition. Those things are luxury. Mm -hmm. So not everybody you can only, it can only be found in the house of rich men. So with that I storm, I think I told the people that God want God wanted to communicate a message mm. to people that there is other side yeah. mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. Life is not always life is not always at light mm -hmm. as you see it. Mm -hmm. Darkness is part of life. Right. And with Ice Storm you have come to experience that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then uh, I think those you are coming to Nigeria will help you to know how blessed you are. Mm -hmm. In everything. Like here you talk security here. Everybody I remember when I was at Owensboro, I parked my car outside until a month and I left, uh, a month and I was home. I left, my, my house was not locked. Nothing happened to my house, nothing happened to my car. It is not the same all over the world. Mm -hmm. It's because of the security here and because of the organized government here. So when people talk of most of these things that is going on here, I said, well, when you go outside, you will see worse than what is going mm -hmm. on. Uh, we should know that we are in a human society. And uh, in a human society, we cannot uh, uh, expect perfection. Things are <coughs> only perfect in heaven. Right. There are imperfections in the world. That is why it is world. If everything becomes perfect here, if it becomes perfect here, then we are in heaven. Then uh, we... Uh, we we no longer long for he that heaven because we already have it here. Mm -hmm. But because here is not heaven, there are lacks here. We long to go to where there is fullness of everything, yeah. mm -hmm. where, is, where there is perfection of everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, coming there will help you mm -hmm. yeah. and help the people also. I'm mm -hmm. thinking what a gift it is for the people that you're ministering to that that you're able to, with, with the, uh, your life in Nigeria and your life in, in Western Kentucky now, you're able to, sh to, to shed some light on things that might be hard for us on our own to see. Yeah. Uh -huh, that you get, you, you're giving perspective that, that so many of us need. Talk about that just a little bit in your, in your ministry. Is that, is that something that you're doing intentionally or is it something that just happens in relationship with you? Uh, I didn't get you well. Um, I'm thinking, do you, do you make, uh, uh, make a plan to, to help um, make Americans or Western Kentuckians more aware yeah. of the difference between this world and the world that you n know? Yeah. Or does that just happen naturally? Do you try to do that on purpose or... Does uh, it happen naturally out of uh, your ministry? Times, oh, oh, um, situation warrants that. Uh -huh. There are things I discover. I said, let us not always focus on this. <laughs> here is better off than outside here. Yeah. All that things, because of uh, uh, differences in life and uh, persons we have a difference uh, difference in perception of life and things and because of that we cannot see the same thing uh, the same way mm -hmm. and if we understand it that way there will be no problem if we recognize that we are different individuals and as different individuals we have different perspectives and that will help us to always reach an agreement, always tolerate each other. Like now, before coming over here, I know that I'm living a different world to go to. Just like if we go to the scripture, uh, Abraham, the call of Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. Yeah. The unknown, the fear of unknown. 
the uncertainty that awaits him. Well, one of the things that end, uh, Abraham blessings from God was uh, his blind, the blind faith, if I put it that way, which made him not to question, God, where do you want me to go? God said, go. And he left everything. Mm -hmm. He did not ask God, where are you taking me to? Why do you, leave, why do you want me to live where I'm comfortable, where I have known people, to go where I do not know? But he blindly followed God. And God was pleased to that, and God blessed him. And as I saw myself in that way, because I, he, I have left my brothers and sisters, my friends, where I grew up with. Mm -hmm. I have left to go to on, uh, an unknown place where I do not know anybody. Yeah. Just grooming in the darkness. But my consolation is, uh, Jesus said, uh, Peter asked Jesus, what of us who have left everything to follow you? Jesus said, anyone who, left, uh, who leaves his mother, father, brother, and sisters will have those things hundredfold here and in the world to come, eternal life. Mm. And that is my consolation. Mm. And uh, Jesus telling his apostles uh, before he ascended into heaven in the Gospel of uh, St. Matthew chapter 28 from 1920 that uh, in 20 he said know that I'm with you till the end of time. Yeah. I know that my coming here God is with me. Mm -hmm. yeah. that because he's with me there will be no fear. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then he will, put, he will do everything uh, everything needed for the ministry and uh, I've been grateful he has been doing it. Mm -hmm. I know you work at Rosary Chapel yeah. and at uh, St. Francis. I, and I, I'm now out of St. Francis okay. but Rosary Chapel and St. Mary's La Center. And St. Mary's La Center. Tell us a little bit about what's going on at Rosary Chapel and at St. Mary's. Okay. Uh, Rosary Chapel, uh, I think, let me start from Owensboro where I lived. Yeah. Uh, in Owensboro, uh, I think I always, St. Paul would tell the Philippians, I always give thanks to God whenever I remember you. I, I, I always give thanks to God whenever I remember the people there, especially the pastor I lived with, Father Freddy Bout. He was, a, he was a friend, a brother, and, and a mentor to me. He helped me to, to get acquainted with the life here. Yeah. He disposed me. I couldn't imagine. I'm telling you, I, I, for the four I, I, at times, I was, when I came in, I was finding it difficult to eat certain things. He helped me. Father Freddy will go out to look for the food, the African food mm. I will eat. He will get it and bring it to me. Wow. He will tell me, Father Julian, your happiness counts a lot to me. I want you to be happy. He, he, he really made me to be happy uh, when we lived mm. together. And I regretted leaving him. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoyed him. And the people of Blessed Mother, they made me to feel home, mm -hmm. to feel at home with them. Practically every family there, every family became my friends. Mm -hmm. They were my friends and uh, the, every family, everybody there cherished me and wanted me to be with them. And to the extent that when I was uh, transferred over here, some people went to the bishop why did, to ask the bishop, that, uh, that, uh, that he will not, they will not allow me to go. The bishop said, what? They said, no, no, we have, we have come to be, uh, to be used with him. Mm. We have gotten used with him. The uh, bishop said, no. That, uh, that I want other people also to experience him. Mm -hmm. So I came over here. The people disposed me. And because of that disposition, I carried it over here. Yeah. And I came over here to meet people of God. The community of believers, I, if I hear, whenever I come over here, like I, I, I used to tell them in the church that my experience with you, my staying with you, has come to remind me the, the, the life of the early church, of the House of Apostles, mm -hmm. the community of believers that have one mind and one heart. 
in doing everything. Coming together to break the bread, praying together, and teaching the things of God. And this is the community I find myself. I, 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 I thank God for an opportunity to work with this community of believers. They are really Christians. That's great. And they always, they always made me to, 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 to come out from myself mm -hmm. and do the, that work of God. Yeah. They always help me to do the work. Yeah. They take care of me. And because of that, you know, uh, one of the things I think uh, when we were in the school, one of the uh, uh, sociologists said that, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Rayland said that one of the things that will make uh, a human being to regret being a human being is when you find yourself in a place where you are not wanted. Mm. When you make yourself an undesirable element that you, you will help yourself and help the environment. Yeah. But because I'm, I, I'm cherished here and loved, it makes me always to be disposed. Yeah. And just to, uh, just my being here, just to tell you the truth, is because I'm relaxed with the people here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's great. Uh, that's uh, because I have two other programs this evening that I should be going to prepare. <laughs> but I said, well, uh, this is my first time I've been invited here. I must honor it. Well, and, uh, I, I, and I thank God that I'm here. So we, this, we, that is the, that is the, uh, why I mention it is that disposition yeah. can help one to go outside himself to do things and be excited and uh, love whatever he's doing. And uh, when you love what you are doing, when you do it and do it well, you feel satisfied oh, yeah. because the, you, you, you feel satisfied and fulfilled yeah. and do everything with love. Right. Mm. Beautiful. I've had the joy of sharing a funeral with Father Julian, mm. and it was a, a great gift. And we are so glad you're among us. Thank you, sir. We thank you for your work, and you, we look forward to seeing you in all sorts of other encounters and ways. Welcome here, and uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you, sir. Today. I'm glad. Yeah. Thank Western you. Kentucky has uh, been given a wonderful gift in, in your ministry thank, in our thank midst. You. So, yeah, thank blessings you. upon you. Good to be together, with you. Gregory, Father Julian. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for um, being a, a faithful viewer of Reflections. We thank you for joining us today. You can check other uh, programs online at, w, uh, at paducah2.org. Uh, an archive of uh, this season's uh, segments are there. Uh, but we invite you to join us again and to join Paducah Cooperative Ministry in doing an important work, which is doing God's work with our mm. human hands. Thank Shalom. You. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.